Hey, good morning from the snowy, cold world of the Paleozoic in the Laramie, Wyoming area. I'm actually in Laramie right now, and I'm gonna be looking around at some of the rocks around us. Um, behind me here is the Casper Formation. It's a Pennsylvanian Permian mixed carbonate clastic system. The clastics are coming from some of the ancestral Rockies that were moving early on. The carbonates are forming when there's lack of clastic input. And we're gonna be looking at it um, here and in some of the areas north of the city. Like I mentioned, it's an important aquifer and we'll see some of the reservoir facies in the clastics especially. So let's take a look at the stuff behind me because there's some really interesting little deposits to be examined. At first glance, it looks like it's all sand, but you can actually see little packages in it kind of cleaning up and flooding and then cleaning up again. And just taking a stroll towards them, you see a variety of sedimentary structures. There's these cross beds that are going due east Nothing huge, um, but we also see a lot of lenticular wavy bedding in here. And the Casper Formation has been interpreted as being sourced by Aeolian deposits that are coming into these intertidal lagoons and kind of forming broad tidal flats, um, or at least filling in the lagoon. And sure enough, you know, structures like this wavy and lenticular bedding that you see in there, that's consistent with tidal action. Here we are north of town in Rogers Canyon. There's more of the Aeolian facies with some of the carbonate up at the top. I was trying to get some outcrops that have some really nice big fusilinids, about the size of uh, jelly beans. But unfortunately, as you can see, the snow is covering most of the area here, so I'm not gonna be able to get to it. Such is life doing winter field work. So I gotta be quick before the semis come. But this is a nice representation of one of those cycles. There are several cycles like this in the Casper Formation, going from Aeolian at the base to tidal, maybe interdune or lagoon at the uh, separation point between the sand and the carbonate. And then finally on the carbonate at the top, that's the shelfful platform carbonate. That's the limestone. And there are several cycles in here, like I mentioned. Um, this whiteboard gives a good representation of what we're seeing in the outcrop. So it's that basal Aeolian sand which actually further up the highway, further to the east, is underlain by the Arcosic Fountain Formation, which represents sediment, sediment being shed by the ancestral Rockies. Then there's the Aeolian dunes, then there's the intertidal, uh, lagoonal or interdune deposits, and then the carbonates. And the little diagram in the upper left here kind of shows um, the working depositional model from these outcrops. So you've got the ancestral Rockies feeding the fluvial fans that feed the fountain formation, giving way to the Aeolian deposits, and then finally the tidal and carbonate units. And that's what's represented by this little cycle back behind us on the highway here. Probably glacial eustatic. Okay, so I safely crossed the highway to take a closer look at this outcrop, and especially this talus block slide of the facies that occurs between the big orange Aeolian and the grayish carbonate. So that's that kind of flaggy, um, what I was calling interdunal or maybe lagoonal or tidal. And these blocks show the kind of telltale signs of algal mat formation. So we've got biofilms forming in probably a shallow marine environment. They can also form in shallow lacustrian systems. But this is where you get, um, you know, we've all seen the microbial mats that form in um, you know, tidal flat environments or even hydrothermal vents, and they leave that characteristic wavy bedding. So coming around the side of this slab with the wrinkly texture, this is kind of interesting. There's a slip face right here. That's a depositional slip face of a, of a bed form that's building in that direction. And if we come around the other side, you can actually see there's a whole bunch of these beds. A lot of them are going right to left on the screen. So there's various orientations of these beds, which makes sense if it's sand that's being delivered by Aeolian deposits, then being modified maybe by tidal currents. Look at that upper one. It's very thick on that side, maybe about 10, 15 centimeters, and then it kind of pinches out and thins down. You're actually seeing a single bed right there um, disappearing. So these are small scale beds, you know, only a few, uh, maybe tens of meters long at the most, pinching out and kind of stacking one on top of the other. And getting a closer look at the Aeolian facies, from a distance, it looks like a pretty monotonous pile of sand, and a lot of people tend to treat them as such. But look at the heterogeneity in here. You can see um, really fine grain material separated from coarser grain than even more porous material. 
and that just continues all through here you know several centimeters of well laminated maybe even oolitic at the top could be oods i'm not really sure and then a little bit more structureless looking sand and more laminated sand um less porous looking more porous less porous more that's just in this one little bed here which is you know about that tall so i don't know 30 40 centimeters tall and that just continues all throughout this aeolian section so even though it looks like a big block of sand wow there's quite a lot of small scale heterogeneity that might be important for your subsurface characterization if this was your reservoir and for any carbonate enthusiasts that might still be watching here's a slab of limestone from the upper part of the outcrop so again this is the casper limestone not part of the aquifer obviously but it too has kind of a like a hummocky texture almost on the top not hummocky crust ratification i'm just saying the texture is like that but it's got that typical limestone kind of leathery appearance to it um, there's some interesting compaction and compressional features evidently all right, I hope you enjoyed our brief but snow-covered visit to the Pennsylvanian Permian Casper Formation right around Laramie, Wyoming. We saw a little bit of interesting stuff with the possible eustatic changes in sea level forcing um, aeolium to give way to carbonates, back to aeolium, back to carbonates. There's probably a tectonic component of that as well. We saw some interesting variability in porosity and permeability in the aeolium deposits. And we saw some cool features of the tidal lagoons that are the interface between the carbonates and the aeolium. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get a chance to get out some rocks and take a look at them. Don't cross highways to look at them. It's just not worth it. Stay safe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.